Hello YouTube, Diecast Nation here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the 1968 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 from Matchbox. But before I begin the review of this 150A scale model, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background information on the real life Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. So this model is based on the FJ40 version of Toyota's Land Cruiser line of off-road vehicles. The Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 was originally released in 1960, and production continued all the way until 1984. From 1960 to 1975, the FJ40 featured a 3.8-liter inline six-cylinder gasoline engine, producing anywhere from 105 to 125 horsepower, depending on the year, and was paired with a three-speed manual transmission. From 1975 to 1984, the FJ40 offered a 4.2-liter inline-six engine, producing 135 horsepower, mated to a four-speed manual transmission. Various four-cylinder and six-cylinder diesel engines were also available, although the two previously mentioned gasoline inline-sixes were the most popular. The Land Cruiser FJ40 is one of Toyota's best-known models and is known for its legendary reliability and off-road performance. So, there you go, there's a little background information on the real-life Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 that provided the inspiration for this model. With that out of the way, I can start reviewing this model, manufactured by Matchbox. So this model was released in 2009 as part of the Desert Adventure 5 pack, number 9. This 1968 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 is finished in orange with a white roof and features a black interior. The windows are clear with a slight black tinting. Now let's go ahead and take a look around this model, shall we? So on the left hand side of this 1968 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40, we have nice mirror detail right here, as well as nice door handle detail. We also have this line running along the entire side of the vehicle, which is very interesting. And right here, we have two hinges for the door. Very nice that Matchbox included that detail there. And we also have an air intake to let air in to cool the engine. And these wheels right here are just simple white wheels, and they add kind of a vintage look to the vehicle. And I think that looks very nice. And that's really about it for the left-hand side of this model. Moving around to the front, I think the front of this Matchbox model looks very nice. Uh, we have nice headlight detail here, painted on. And we have Toyota written out in white uh, in between the headlights and the grille. And on either side we have turn signal lights, again painted on. And we have a nice black bumper right here, just simple black plastic bumper. Looks very nice. And up here in the hood we have some nice hood detail. Again more air intake to cool the engine. And we also have hinges for the hood. And our windshield here does not feature any windshield wiper detail, which is unfortunate. Moving along to the right hand side, it is virtually identical to the left hand side with the exception of this fuel filler cap right here because obviously the left hand side doesn't have it and the right hand side here does have it. And moving around to the back, we have our barn style doors with two windows and then we have two wrap around windows on either side of that. We have nice hinge detail on either side for each door. And right here is where your license plate would go. We also have a nice plastic bumper again. And we have red painted on taillight detail here and turn signal detail. Overall it looks very nice. And I think that Matchbox did a really good job with this wraparound window here. They uh, curved the piece of plastic in there that's, that's supposed to be acting as the glass. And overall, I think it looks very nice. And moving around to the top here, this is a simple white top, nothing special. Uh, it is constructed out of die, die cast, like the rest of the vehicle. It's just painted. And taking a look at the interior, this vehicle does come finished with a black interior. And as you can see, it is right-hand drive, so this Matchbox model is not based off of a vehicle that would have been sold in the United States. As you can see, we have a steering wheel in there, some fairly nice dash detail, uh, no gear level lever that I can see, and it does have 
rear seats that face inwards instead of forwards, which is something you do see in these FJ40 Land Cruisers. And overall, it's a, it's a fairly highly detailed interior. Looks pretty decent. It is fairly hard to see in there. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it's even a little bit hard for me to see in there. But anyway, that's the interior. Moving around to the bottom here, it says copyright 2008, Mattel Inc, 1968, Toyota Land Cruiser, FJ40, and we have a Matchbox logo, and Thailand down here. And I think that Matchbox did a really good job with the detailing on the underside of this vehicle, because the FJ40 did feature front and rear leaf spring suspension, uh, as well as front and rear solid axles, and Matchbox did a very good job capturing that detail here. As you can see, we have the front leafs and the rear leafs, and we have this front differential and axle along with the drive shaft here. Again, in the rear as well, differential, drive shaft, and our axle. And overall, it's just a very nicely detailed undercarriage to this model, and I really do appreciate that. Let's give you a quick look around the model once again. And there we go. That is my review of the, and the car's rolling away, but anyway, that is my review of the 1968 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 from Matchbox. Overall, I am definitely a big fan of this car. Uh, if you haven't already figured this out, I'm a big fan of Toyotas. I'm just a big Toyota guy. And this is the most iconic Toyota that you can find out there. This is probably the, probably the most well-known Toyota that has ever been made and it's just so iconic and I just I love the styling to it and I love that Matchbox conveyed a lot of those details and in, in that styling uh, in this model right here and uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of the color and as far as I know this was not a factory color in real life I'm pretty sure that Toyota didn't offer this Land Cruiser originally in orange and I'm not sure why Matchbox chose to paint it orange, and I kind of wish they would have painted it a different color. But it doesn't look too bad overall. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I really do enjoy this model a lot. And, uh, I definitely recommend picking this one up. This one's definitely, uh, worthwhile to have in your collection. So, that's it. Stay tuned for my next video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.